Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through chronic venous insufficiency. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash chronic venous insufficiency or in the vascular surgery section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Chronic venous insufficiency occurs when blood is not efficiently draining from the legs back to the heart. Usually this is the result of damage to the valves inside the veins. This damage may occur with age, immobility, obesity, prolonged standing or after a deep vein thrombosis. It's often associated with varicose veins. The valves inside the veins are responsible for ensuring that blood flows in one direction as the leg muscles contract and squeeze the veins. When the valves are damaged, the pumping effect of the leg muscles becomes less effective in draining blood towards the heart. Blood pools in the veins of the legs, causing venous hypertension. Chronic pooling of blood in the legs leads to skin changes. The area between the top of the foot and the bottom of the calf muscle is the area most affected by these changes, and this is known as the gaiter area. Hemosiderin staining is a red-brown discoloration which is caused by hemoglobin leaking out of the vessels into the skin. Hemosiderin is a breakdown product of hemoglobin. Venous eczema, or varicose eczema, refers to dry, itchy, flaky, scaly, red and cracked skin. These eczema-like changes are caused by a chronic inflammatory response in the skin. Lipodermatosclerosis refers to hardening and tightening of the skin and the tissue beneath the skin. Chronic inflammation causes the subcutaneous tissue to become fibrotic, turning into scar tissue. Inflammation of the subcutaneous fat is called paniculitis. Lipodermatosclerosis causes narrowing of the lower legs, which creates a typical inverted champagne bottle appearance, which looks like a champagne bottle that's been turned upside down, with very narrow lower legs, that transitions into a wider calf and upper leg. Atrophy blanche refers to patches of smooth porcelain white scar tissue on the skin, often surrounded by hyperpigmentation. And this is a feature of chronic venous insufficiency as well. As well as the skin changes that we've discussed, Chronic venous insufficiency can lead to cellulitis or infection in the skin, poor healing after injury, skin ulcers, and pain. A Tom tip for you, chronic venous changes are very common in older patients. It's very easy to find patients with these skin changes to use in OSCE examinations so it's worth getting familiar with their appearance and confidently presenting your examination findings. These changes are often misdiagnosed as cellulitis and patients are given courses of antibiotics. The broken skin and eczema-like changes do leave patients more prone to skin infections, so infection does need to be considered, but keep in mind that bilateral cellulitis is quite unusual and chronic skin changes related to venous insufficiency will not resolve with antibiotics. Let's talk about management. Management of chronic venous insufficiency involves keeping the skin healthy, improving venous drainage to the legs, and managing complications. The skin can be kept healthy by monitoring the skin health and avoiding skin damage, Regular use of emollients, for example, diprobase, oilatum, cetraben, or double base. Topical steroids to treat flares of venous eczema. And very potent topical steroids to treat flares of lipodermatosclerosis. 
Improving venous drainage to the legs involves weight loss if the patient is obese. Keeping active. Keeping the legs elevated when resting. And the use of compression stockings. Although arterial disease needs to be excluded before using compression stockings, using an ankle brachial pressure index. And finally, management of complications involves antibiotics when infection occurs, analgesia for pain, and wound care for ulceration. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.